Let's see now how we can use Redis as our memory database to have our short-term and long-term memory activated for our agentic workflows. Then why Redis and how we can code that in action? Well, just a couple of days ago, Landgraph did an integration with Redis. Redis is definitely a well-known name for in-memory based database which is pretty fast with low latency and it's certainly a great choice for retrieving information that we need low latency like having a long term and short term memory for our AI agents and good news is that you don't need to actually code that manually because Landgraph just did this for you with this recent uh, in, uh, integration within these two services. So before I show you the package that I use and the code, let me provide you a walkthrough on what's the main benefit here and how we can enable that integration in our own workflows. Well, Langraph, if you already know I'm familiar with, it's an open source package which is in a stateful way of using graph-based execution to create your agentic workflows and leverage your own language models and have that workflow created for you through enabling any AI agent that you have in mind to design them. On the other hand, we have Redis which is a very high performance memory based database that you can store data, retrieve data in very fast manner and it has also vector search capabilities so yes, you know, you can have now similarity search enabled with retrieving those memory that we are saving in Redis and it is JSON friendly so we have two type of actually memory that we can create for our agents and store them in Redis the first one is thread level the second one is cross thread Thread level is about the short term memory that when you want to store something within the current chat session that you have with the user. But if you want to keep some of those memory for tomorrow or another time and retrieve those information back through long term memory, we call it cross thread memory. Let me be more specific here. So short term memory is for your current working station. We have some, again, Chatbot is just an example, an any agentic workflow execution. And you want to make sure these agents, they know the current state of your work as a short-term memory. Redis can support that through something called Redis Saver. But on the other hand, for long-term memory, you can actually have this enabled as well for Redis Store, using Redis Store, which goes beyond just your current working station session, and you can have your memory, long-term memory retrieved even after finishing the session and utilizing that again for future succession. So to give you an example here, let's say I want to say to my chatbot, my name is Bob, and agents say that I will remember that. So with Redis Saver, Saver which I actually just mentioned that here for thread level with this current chat session, it will remember that my name is Bob because it is saved. Now, if I want to start this, this next thread and I'm saying that, what's my name? The agent knows, kind of say that your name is Bob. So this is technically a very vanilla example of what is memory here because language model APIs by itself, they're stateless. They have no clue if you ask the second question, what was your previous question, unless you enable that memory store for both long term or short term as you, as you wish. So without Redis memory here, it wouldn't even remember what was my previous question and what was the previous answer. But on Redis memory on the right side, it would know and it will retrieve that information back from, from database Redis database, maybe using similarity search to answer the question. So what's the benefit here to recap? Well, technically using Redis, it is very, very highly performant. You can have even latency of sub milliseconds, like less than one millisecond to retrieve and interact with this database because it is based on memory, not disk. Second, it has vector search capabilities, so you can definitely have semantic search to retrieve information back from the database. It's pretty scalable. You can have that implemented locally in your machine as an open source Redis, or you can have cloud version of that, which is managed for you. Like in Google GCP, you can have cloud memory store, which is a managed version of Redis. And it's pretty developer friendly. It's JSON friendly, and you can have the Python API integrated in your workflows, which is pretty easy and well supported in open source community as well. All right, so to give you a quick code of snippets on how we can have for long-term and short-term memory, for short-term memory, you need to just create a Redis Saver, as we discussed, with uh, calling Redis Saver from Landgraph Checkpoint Redis, which is the package we discussed. As you can see here, I can add that checkpointer within my agent that I'm creating here, React agent using Landgraph, and then with having a config file, which is just a username here, which is gonna be the ID that I'm gonna to use to keep this state of the chat, it will know that short-term memory interactions. Now for long-term, very similar. I just need to enable a namespace for the memory, which is here user123, and the username is Bob, so it will know even for future interactions, even for long-term memory, 
that that username was raw all right so let me go and show you a quick code example that how I enabled that so here's a Google collab I did and as you see the main package that I installed is LangGraph check more Redis you can certainly have some other packages installed based on your type of agent that you're working and creating here your choice of language model will be in place mine for example here is cloud model from anthropic api key which i added here and here's my model and then here i'm going to create a react agent for short-term memory that's going to have a tool for calling weather data here assume that this is going to be a weather api to fetch the weather of the city that i'm asking from the agent here i hard coded that to give you an example and then for connecting to my redis this can be your local server or here a managed version of that a cloud which is what i'm using definitely here and then we just enabling that as i showed you in the in the code snippets you need to just have that as a checkpoint added to your react agent so now if i'm gonna ask what's the weather in new york city for the current thread id which is right number one it would say that for nyc the weather in nyc might be cloudy because i have already specified that here now, if I'm going to ask a follow-up question, what's the weather, okay, I asked what's the weather, and the follow-up question is, what is it is known for? Well, it wouldn't know what I'm referring to when I say it, because it doesn't have any memory. But because we enabled that with Redis as a checkpointer, it knows what I'm talking about. And because I'm still in the same thread, it would say that, oh, New York City is known for this and that now let's go beyond just short-term memory I want to maybe run this agent tomorrow another time so I want to have this long-term memory how can I do it for long-term memory you can retrieve information through semantic search that's why I am creating an index and of course you need an embedding model you can add yours and then distance type measurement for me gonna be here cosine similarity and with creating this index now with having of course your choice of model here again I'm using cloth I'm going to say that hey create this function that one call my agent or model but with these configurations, first you need to know what's the user ID. We need that for the memory. And also we're gonna create a namespace for having a long-term memory using that user ID. Then we're gonna search anything that we have about that user from the past to create that information of historical long-term memory and give it as a system message to my prompt. So now my language model knows some information about past because we retrieve from this and give it back to, to the model in the system message. And then I'm gonna say that if at any part of the chat, today, tomorrow, another time, you see the word remember, you need to put that information inside the long-term memory. It's a very simple example. You can have that even more complex, but here's just an example to show you how you can have some information suddenly within your chat or interaction of agents stored as your long-term memory. Then I'm gonna invoke the model with having that system master that has memory information and retrieve the response back. So let's give it a try. Uh, again, I'm using Redis and Checkpointer created to compile that graph because I'm using Lang graph. And here I'm going to say that the user ID is one, let's say here, Bob. For thread ID, which is today, I'm interacting with this agent. And I'm gonna say that remember my name is Bob because that word remember has been used this is gonna go to the long-term memory and in my agent I'm gonna say that yeah I'll remember that now tomorrow for the same person but tomorrow it's another thread ID if I'm gonna ask what's my name it will retrieve that from memory and tell, tell that your name is Bob so you see that it's a long-term memory it goes beyond just the current thread it's it's a cross thread memory interaction but if I'm gonna do the same thing in another thread let's say third day but for another user, this is not Bob anymore, it's user number two, and I'm gonna ask the same question, what's my name? It doesn't know anything. So that was a quick overview of how you can have, first of all, long-term, short-term memory, what is the definition of that in your agent? It was pretty simple and straightforward. And second, okay, I need a place to store this memory. What's a, what's a good choice? I figured out that actually Redis is a pretty good one. When we talk about memory in general, Redis naturally comes to our mind. And you might already be familiar with Redis as online feature store for your classical machine learning applications. And I think Redis integration as a memory for agents is a certainly a scalable approach. And I saw this integration is there with LangGraph, so good news, you don't need to code from scratch. I hope you find this video enjoyable and helpful. If yes, I'll be very thankful if you click on like icon and make sure you write down your question thoughts in comment sections. And by the way, all the codes that I showed you is added to the Discord channel in the reference section and the discord channel link is added to the video description below all right thank you so much